It's the distant future, the year 4000, and the universe has run low on its most precious resource, fabulous hair. But fear not, for on planet Wallamazoo, a wig has been discovered. A tuft of hair so fabulous, it causes creatures from every corner to swoon with delight. Lurking in the dark corners of the galaxy, two groups have emerged in battle for the mop up top. On one side, the Space Ninjas. On the other side, the Pirate Squirrels. These two intergalactic foes must now battle head to head for these lovely locks of hair. Who will win the beautiful wig of Wallamazoo? Stay tuned to find out during another episode of... Space Ninjas vs. Pirate Squirrels! Hello everybody! Welcome back to another amazing week of... Space Ninjas vs. Pirate Squirrels! I know what you're thinking, oh, Miss Bethany, your hair is so fabulous, and you are correct, it is so fabulous. During Space Ninjas vs. Pirate Squirrels, we are battling our way through the book of Judges in the Old Testament to win this awesome, fantastic, amazing wig of Wallamazoo. So, you know how it goes. We are going to go through our Bible story. We'll do some review questions and let's see how well your amazing brains are listening and understanding what we are learning about from God's word. So we have an excellent story today about the judges, uh, one in specific, but our big idea for this week is God desires righteousness and he wants us to control our anger. So let's jump into our big Bible story on Samson. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. I gotta get all my things ready to go for our story. So last week we learned about Gideon. So many, many, many years after Gideon died, a new enemy to the Israelites called the Philistines started to attack. So God sent his people a new judge to help rule over them and his name was Samson. There was something different about Samson though. God gave Samson incredible strength. So Samson, the Bible tells us two different instances. One where Samson, everyone roar like a lion. Roar! So Samson just like attacked a lion, he said it ripped his mouth with his hands, his bare hands, he was so strong. Now. God had given Samson this incredible strength so that he could help free the Israelites from the Philistines. Unfortunately though, Samson had some major weaknesses. You see, Samson had trouble living his life in the ways that God calls us to live, that are pleasing to God. Let's take a look at some of them right here. So let's see, he disobeyed his parents, he married a Philistine woman who didn't know and didn't love God. But most of all, Samson had a terrible anger problem. Ooh. All right, so I'll get ready. Maybe we can uh, all show our angriest faces. Ready? Three, two, one. Got like a fight face. That's good. We're good. We're good. All right, so Samson would get more and more and more angry until he would explode. And God wanted Samson to free the Israelites from the Philistines, but Samson was too busy being angry and picking fights with people. Let's check out what happens. So the Philistines got really tired of Samson. And so they came up with a plan to capture and eventually kill him. That was their goal. So we gotta go to the book of Judges, which is Old Testament. And we're going to uh, book, uh, chapter 16, too far. Um, chapter 16, verse four and five. Here we go. Judges, gotta keep flipping forward. 12, oh, 17, 
14. Here we go. Uh, da, 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 da. It says, uh, sometime later, Samson fell in love again. The woman lived in the valley of Sorek, and her name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her. They said, see if you can tell, uh, get him to tell uh, you the secret of why he is so strong. Find out so that we can overpower him. Then we will tie him up and bring him under control. Each of us will give you 28 pounds of silver. All right. Now, Delilah, Samson's wife, was a Philistine. So she was super happy to help her people. So this is what happened. When Delilah would ask Samson, Samson, if someone tied you up, like what would make you weak? So Samson would say to her, if someone tied me up with, excuse me, okay, hold on, with leather straps, I would be as weak as any man. So when he was sleeping, Delilah would tie him up in some leather straps. Whoa, here we go. She would tie him up and then once she had his hands tied together, she would yell, Samson, Samson, the Philistines are attacking. And Samson would jump out of bed. And he would just rip off the tie, snap them like they were nothing. The next night, Delilah said, Samson, no, seriously, tell me how to tie you up. This time, Samson said to her, oh, if someone ties me up with a brand new rope, I will be as weak as any man. So that night when Samson is sleeping, Delilah comes and ties him up with a brand new rope and then he's all tied up and while he's sleeping she yells, Samson, Samson, the Philistines are attacking. And Samson shot out of bed and ripped it off like it was nothing. Delilah wouldn't give up though. She kept nagging and pastoring Samson until he finally told her the truth of where his strength came from. So Samson told her, I am a Nazarite set apart for God. I've never cut my hair. If you shave my head, I will be as weak as any other man. And as Samson fell asleep that night, Delilah bruh, cut off his hair. And when the Philistines attacked him, he had no strength to defend himself. The Philistines were easily able to capture Samson and make him their prisoner in the temple. So in his final moments of life, Samson called out to God and asked God to give him one final big burst of strength. Samson was tied up in the temple and he, with one last burst of strength, he grabbed those two pillars that he was tied up to and pushed them with all of his might and the temple came crashing down, killing both Samson as well as about 3,000 Philistines that were with him. Now, if it wasn't for Samson's anger and disobedience towards God, God could have used Samson to do some pretty incredible things. So on that note, let's jump into some uh, questions, get our big brains thinking and learning about what this story can teach us. And I'll see you back in just a second for our battle.
All right, welcome back. Now that you've heard our story for today, it's time to use our amazing brains and see how well you were listening. Are you ready? Here we go. Question number one. Who was Israel's new enemy in the story of Samson? Was it the Philippians, the Philistines, the Philippians, the Philistines, Philistines? It was the Philistines. You probably knew that because I couldn't pronounce any of the other ones. Good job. All right. What was Samson able to kill with his bare hands? Was it a giant tiger, a lion eating man, a man eating lion, or an angry badger? This one's kind of tricky. It was a man eating lion. All right, which of these things did Samson not do? Disobey his parents, married a Philistine woman, lost his temper, or worshiped false gods? Which one did he not do? That's right, he didn't worship any false gods. Good job. All right, who was the woman, the woman that helped the Philistines capture Samson? Was it Deborah, Delilah, Diana or Damaris? That's right, it's Delilah. Great job, guys. Last question. Which of the following was not one of the ways that Delilah tried to capture Samson? Tied his hand with a wet rope, tied his hands with leather straps, tied his hands with new rope, or cut his hair. This one's also a tricky one, but the answer is tied his hands with wet rope. It was a new rope that she used. How did you guys do? I'm sure you did fantastic because you are amazing at listening. So it was a bit of a shame in our story how we learned about Samson because God could have used Samson to do a lot of really amazing things. But he was just too big of a mess. Samson wasn't able to live a life of righteousness. Whoa, sound the alarms, big word, new word. I think we should check this out. Let's look at the definition and see what the heck we're talking about when we say righteousness. So righteousness is a noun. It means living our lives in a way that God says is right. So does anyone remember what some of the things that Samson did that was not righteous? We talked about them at the start. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Disobeyed his parents, married a Philistine woman. Now the issue there was that this was someone who didn't love or know God. And he had an anger problem. Samson made a lot of poor choices, but the greatest problem that he faced was he let his anger control him. Now, let me show you what I mean. This is our angry balloon guy. So in our story, Samson kept getting more and 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 more angry until he would finally burst. Whoa! Oh my goodness! Oh! And when Samson went burst. It was a big mess. Oh, oh, I'm covered in it. Oh. So, what do you think? Do you think that anger helped Samson live a life of righteousness? No way. In fact, that's exactly what our Bible verse, oh, it's covered in it as well. Look at it. Ugh is going to teach us today. So it's from the book of James, which is in the New Testament. Flip, flip, flip. There we go. Chapter 1, verse 19 
220. It says, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Whoa, that is a powerful verse. This verse tells us that when we get really angry and blow up, we are not living our lives in the way that God says is right. Oh, but how about you? Do you ever find yourself in a situation that you feel like you could blow up and make a big mess like Samson in our story? Yeah. Have you ever yelled at somebody? Yeah. Have you ever maybe had like a bit of a fit because you're so angry? Yeah. I know that I have and I think that a lot of us probably have. But we know that that's not what God desires for us for lots of reasons. But God desires righteousness and he wants us to be able to control our anger. Now, here is the great news though. God knows that we all mess up sometimes. Thank goodness for God's grace. He knows that none of us can be completely righteous on our own. And that's why he gave us Jesus. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. Samson ended up sacrificing himself to save Israel. But Jesus sacrificed himself to save the entire world, everyone. And because of that, we have eternal life with him in heaven. That is such an amazing gift. And he also gave us our helper, the Holy Spirit. What is one of the fruit of the Spirit? Self-control, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. None of those things are anger or bursting or anything. Those are positive, beautiful things. And that is what God desires for us when we are living our lives in a way that brings glory, like we learned a couple weeks ago, to Him. So He wants us to live our lives in a way that is full of righteousness, just like our verse says. So let us pray and thank God for this amazing gift of Jesus and the help of the Holy Spirit. So wonderful, we couldn't do it without Him. Let's pray. God, we thank you for another amazing story from the judges. Thank you that your word teaches us so many things that will help us every single day of our lives. We thank you for this example of Samson and how it shows us that anger and doing and living our lives in a way that is not righteous leads to some pretty not good stuff. But we thank you that you sent Jesus. We thank you that you forgive us and your grace is sufficient for us. And we thank you that we have the Holy Spirit working in us and with your help, we can make choices and live our lives in a way that all not only bring glory to you, but also help us to control our anger and live our lives in a way that reflects what you want for us with that, your purpose and your plan. So we thank you for that. We pray that you will help us this week in the things that we say and the things that we do. When we're feeling like we are getting pumped up and about to explode, pray that you would just have peace over our lives. And we know that you will do that because you are good and you are faithful. Pray these things in Jesus name. Everyone said, amen. All right, my friends, that is our lesson for this week. What a great example. We don't want to explode the way that Samson did in anger and create this big, big mess that can happen because now I have to clean up this big mess. And when we get angry and explode, there's a mess to clean up. We have to apologize and make things right. So it was awesome learning this with you. I love learning from God's word and his truths that he has for our lives. So I will see you next week, my friends. And I hope you have ooh, 
still covered in it. I hope you have a fabulous week. Bye, 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 bye.